Good morning everybody, how you doing today? My name's Andrew, I'm one of the Veggie Boys, and I want to thank you for stopping by. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I can grow lots of vegetables, but I can't grow this channel without your help. Yes, you've probably noticed we're back out in the sweet corn field. What can I say? We need sweet corn every day. It's just the way it works. What I'm gonna do now before I get started picking and I start showing what's going on here, I'm gonna show you something from earlier to help you appreciate why we need sweet corn. Already this morning we had a full bin of corn and we sold everything. Someone had called and placed an order. So there's 50 years of corn in each one of these boxes. Uh, we have a lot of orders taken care of this morning. Uh, there's all this stuff back here. This was already picked. So we've, the boys have been busy. They picked all, a lot of this stuff yesterday. I wasn't filming yesterday, so I didn't get any of it, but they picked eggplant, some zucchini, peppers, cucumbers. The boys were really, really busy. So these are all orders. This is all orders. This is all orders. This is all orders. This corn right here is all orders. So been a lot of orders this morning before we even get started. Welcome back guys. We just got that bin filled with sweet corn. Joel showed up and now I think we have to pick some white because these fields are completely done. So at this farm we're at, we are finished picking sweet corn. Woo! While they get the wagon hooked up, Joel and I, we're going to get started on some white sweet corn. So I've got the crates here and Joel's coming with me. So all these corn stalks here, they're not going to be wasted. They're not just going to be left here to rot or mowed. You can see this is all empty here. There's a lot of open space. The reason why is because we use this machine and we cut that corn, we cut the stalks and the ears and then we'll feed it to our cows. I'll tell you what, this is really confusing to pick because these ears are so thin. Now let's just check, let's just check. Oh, that's money! This is an ear of white corn that I just picked. I am in some later variety, so this is something we're going to be picking in like a, probably about two weeks, and it's mid-pollination. So if you look, you can see all the pollen getting ready to fall off. If you've not seen the video, I'll link it somewhere up above, but my dad was explaining how pollination in corn works, and I just wanted to show you the silk. Now this is really sticky, it even sticks to my fingers, but look right here. So this pollen up top falls down onto the sticky, onto the silk, and then it pulls it down in and starts all those kernels. So I just wanted to show you guys, this corn is in mid-pollination. So that's why I gotta be careful walking through here because I get all this stuff on you and then it makes you itchy and then I have to cry and then dad tells me to be quiet. It's a really neat color though. Look at that. I've seen some hair that looks like that. Hey Joel, hey Joel, could you imagine if your hair was that color? Um, boy that would be pretty crazy, wouldn't it? Steam and flow. I want all my left-handed people down in the comments. Let me know who you are and where you at. Forget the road hogs. We got the veggie hogs right here. Everyone's got a quad this morning, four-wheeler, whatever you want to call it. The veggie hogs. I don't think the camera's picking it up, but there is steam coming off the corn. Like a lot of steam. It's getting warm outside. Nope, can't see anything. Smells good though. Really smells good. Best spot in the cooler. Grammy's homemade pickles. Yeah, Grammy makes still pickles out of the uh, cucumbers and stuff that we pick. And... Mm. For quite some time now, you guys have been seeing us pick a lot of sweet corn and a lot of peppers. But now we're getting into tomatoes. Okay, so that's really exciting. Uh, canning season is right around the corner and we're starting to get orders. Uh, we have plum and round tomatoes. I, I, plum tomatoes are my favorite thing to pick. Out of all the vegetables that we harvest, plum tomatoes are my favorite to pick. 
So what we need is, I'm not sure exactly how many we need for the weekend, but dad was saying like 25 half bushel or something. So we have to get started picking because it's still early. Not all the tomatoes are ripe yet. So we're gonna get started now. We're gonna try and pick down through these rows and see how many plum tomatoes we can get. Gotta move all the plants to get what's underneath. Try not to break the plants. Ooh, look at those. And we go through quite a bit of sauce. Go through a lot of sauce. Tomato sauce, salsa, Spaghetti sauce, pizza sauce, we make it all. All that sauce. <laughs> no, what happens when you do pick a one that's not ripe yet, we just leave it sit on the plastic. The birds won't bother it or anything. Oh, it's just funny because the crows won't bother stuff that we set on the plastic. But what that will do is it will continue to ripen. And that's an interesting fact. A lot of your tomatoes that you buy in stores and things like that, they are actually tomatoes that have been picked, basically green, and then as they're shipped, they ripen. There we go, got a nice basket of plum tomatoes. Got a lot more to go. We got the plum finished. We got about 21 baskets, 22, I'm not really sure. I didn't count. Uh, Dad has been picking round tomatoes, and now Joel is working on two half bushel of green tomatoes that we want to have at the store in case somebody wants to come and make some spicy green tomatoes. Ooh, the wind is really picking up, so it's hard to film right now, but what are you going to do? Those tomatoes aren't even ripe. What are you doing? Join me, and together we can rule the valley. Every time one of those diesel trucks pulls on by, we can just go skirt, skirt. Joel's getting the last basket. We got a nice haul of tomatoes here. They look really awesome. You saw all those tomatoes on the back of the wagon. We got finished picking, and now we have some cucumbers that we need to get before we head back to the farm. The boys picked pickles and zucchini yesterday. So we kind of do it like every couple days we'll pick zucchini and pickles and then on the other off days we'll pick cucumbers. So that's what we're working on now. You have like a green thumb and hand. Nice byproduct of picking tomatoes. Picking cucumbers isn't too bad. The plants are having a little trouble. They're starting to die on us. The season for cucumbers isn't too long here. Uh, the plants, they don't last forever. And we're also getting to the time of the year when all the moisture and all the air is coming from the south. So this is when a lot of our mildews are going to start coming. I hear the crows over in the trees, Dad. It's not good. I don't like the crows. Sometimes I have trouble filming because of the wind, and I apologize about it on the, I don't know, I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning. But I live in a valley, so we have mountains over there, then mountains over there, so the wind just shoots right through this valley. And we got a lot of wind in this area, which it's a good thing and a bad thing. I can't film, but it makes it so nice when we're picking. Uh, it's like a love-hate. Come on, lefty, let's go! Left this. Ah! Here comes Daniel. Daniel's been mowing hay all morning. We're hoping for about 400, 500. 
but we'll see what we get. Joel needs 400 bales, right? I always need hay. Joel always needs hay. Cause he just changed that out in the back there. Daniel brought water. Thank you, Daniel. You guys notice dad's a little like toned down? It's because he's tired. Did you not drink your coffee this morning? He started before the coffee. He started before the coffee. He drinks decaf anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. He doesn't really need coffee. Vegetable picking does a number on your back and your knees at the end of the day. Being bent over all day picking, it's not too easy. There's enough basil here to kill a person. And here's enough basil to kill my Aunt Rhonda. She's very allergic. She can't have pizza. She has to make all her own pizza sauce though because any pizza sauce you buy somewhere or any other spaghetti sauce, it all has basil in it. So Aunt Rhonda has to make her own without basil or else she'd get sick. And you could say, you know, well, it's just basil. It probably doesn't change the flavor that much. <laughs> it definitely changes the flavor. We'll all be taken care of. Oh! <laughs> I was attacked in the eggplant. Look, there's Joel's baby. Is it a boy or a girl? Or dinosaur eggs, you can't tell. I was just thinking about something and I wanted to share it with you guys. If you look at these watermelons, okay, you roll this all over, you see there is no yellow spot on it, right? Now, if you go online and you search, what does a yellow spot mean on a watermelon? It means it's ripe. So does that mean these are unripe? <gasps> no. So that yellow spot, baloney. What you wanna do, you, when you slap a watermelon, You hear how it's hollow? That just means it's not overripe. The only way to tell that a watermelon is actually ripe is when you harvest it. It's the only way to really tell. And I can show you how you tell if a cantaloupe's ripe. And when you're picking out your cantaloupes, guys. So it doesn't work the same way. If it's hollow, that doesn't mean anything. You wanna find the opposite end of the stem. So you flip it completely around and then you see right there, you can push on it with your thumb or your finger. The softer that spot is, the riper the cantaloupe. So that's the best way to find out how ripe your cantaloupes are. Well guys, that's where we're gonna end the video today. We hope to see you next time. Bye bye I'm holding honey spoons. I'm eating chocolate.